So welcome everybody to uh, this month's podcast from the Diversity Project Gender Workstream. Um, I'm Gillian Hepburn from Shoulders, as you know, and this is the 11th um, in the podcast series. And I'm really looking forward to this one. We've had such good fun on the, the little pre-call that we do in advance of this. So um, maybe this is just a bit of a fun time Friday. So, um, uh, but we are ready and rearing to go. Um, just as a reminder, the purpose of these podcasts is to, to think about how we can encourage women to join our industry. However, as I always say every month, everybody is welcome. And, and generally the themes that we've talked about over the last nearly a year now have been very relevant to everybody, no matter um, what gender. Um, the previous podcasts are all available on the uh, Diversity Project website and Spotify. And as one of my guests, who will shortly be introduced, pointed out, they're also on Apple Podcasts. There you go. Um, very exciting. We're trending everywhere now. Um, last month, we had a great session uh, considering networking. So do jump on to that at some point if you've not already listened to it, because it was it was a good fun one. Um, this month, we are talking about coaching. Now, it's quite an interesting one because I was challenged a little bit having done a mentoring podcast two months ago as to, well, isn't it just the same thing? So that's one of the areas that we will explore on this podcast. What is the difference between coaching and mentoring? Um, so without further ado, I'm, I am delighted today to be joined by Doug Faulkner, who's a professional coach who works with many clients in financial services, including me. So this is a bit, it feels a little bit like role reversal today. It's my turn to ask the questions. I'm also delighted to be joined by Holly Nardi from um, Reddington, who, as some of you may know, is the author of a great blog called, got to check this, Get Woke, Not Broke. And we're going to ask her about this later on in the podcast. But first of all, I would just like to have a little round of applause for Holly, who last night won Marketing Influencer of the Year at the Investment Week um, Women's uh, Women's Awards. So sorry, yeah, can't, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? Holly? <laughs> anyway, Holly, congratulations on the award. Very, very well deserved. Um, Thank you. So as you can tell, Holly and I were both at the, um, at the ceremony last night and had quite a late one so um but have to say we're refreshed ready and ready to go um so as usual i'm going to ask the guests as we introduce them to just give us a little bit of background on on them and um, and what they do and and um, just as we start to introduce and explore the topic so um to start this conversation, Doug, I'm going to start with you and and also congratulations to Doug because he is my first male guest on this podcast. So it's great to have you on board in my virtual studio today. Can you start by sharing some of your background, Doug, and also your thoughts on the topic on the difference between coaching and mentoring? Over to you. Yeah. Yes, I can. Thanks, Gillian. And also, thank you. I'm really flattered to be uh, invited um, uh, to be part of this podcast um, as the only boy. <laughs> um, it's, no, it's, it's really it's really lovely. Um, and so thank you to you and everyone who's listening. Um, I think from my perspective, so who I am is I'm a performance coach. So specifically um, for me, that means I coach individuals and teams to perform at their best within their careers. Um, my expertise, I suppose, around innovation and personal impact, because innovation is my background. Um, and I suppose if I was going to articulate the difference between mentoring and coaching, and again, this is just my interpretation, and there are lots of you know different interpretations, all of which are valid, some of which are more useful than others, <laughs> um, is that um, a mentor is somebody who has um, trod the same path that you're starting. So they're in the same industry or they're in the same organization. Um, obviously, um, things will change by the time you get to some of those stages, but they have a, a closer frame of reference. And a mentor generally is somebody who's available to you as and when you need them around the specific areas or steps that you're likely to go through in your industry or, um, or particular business, because sometimes you need a mentor in certain company cultures or organizations. And a coach is, I suppose, somebody who looks, I don't suppose, I know, <laughs> is somebody who looks at the bigger picture. Um, so um, what is your motivations? Where do you want to go? How well are you looking after yourself? How well are you serving yourself in all the things that are going to um, give you a duvet chuck moment? Um, and also, more specifically, actually get results. 
and what you're doing. So a coach doesn't do it for you. They coach you to do it for yourself. A running coach will have an expert knowledge in running. They won't do the running for you, but they'll make sure that you are as aware as possible of how well you're running and, and where you need to improve. Does that does that, that make sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely Great. makes sense. <laughs> No, it definitely makes sense to me, that's for sure, because obviously <laughs> I've been very involved in both coaching and mentoring, and um, and I agree with you, um, and of, often I felt that mentoring, you need different people to mentor you for different reasons, yeah, and mm. at different times in your career, whereas a coach is somebody that almost that sits um, alongside you, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but, but Holly, welcome and um, and congratulations again. We're all very excited for you. It was such great news last night. But Holly, do you want to share some of your background uh, with the audience today? And also, what, what's your take on this in terms of coaching and, and also mentoring? Sure, yeah. Thank you as well for having me. Um, so I joined Reddington as an investment consultant on their grad programme in 2017. Um, and so my role basically was helping to advise large defined benefit pension schemes on their investment strategies. Um, but then earlier this year, I went a bit off piste to become Reddington's first investment content creator, um, which I don't think many people will know what that means because I don't think it's a real job. But basically <laughs> any content that comes from Reddington, whether that be like our net zero announcement or our sustainable investment survey that came out recently um, would have gone through me, which is um, pretty cool, I think. Um, and then, as you mentioned, alongside that, I also run um, Get Woke Not Broke, which is um, it was a blog. It's more of kind of just focused on social media now, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's basically about educating young people um, on the scary world of finance. Um, in terms of my take on coaching, it's very similar to Doug's, I think, um, probably because we spoke last week. <laughs> um, but I do think that while, yeah, mentoring and coaching, they are similar. I think the key difference from, in my opinion and in my experience, is that mentoring feels like it's getting someone exactly um, from point A to point B based on their experience. Um, whereas coaching feels like it's more giving them the tools and the skills to get themselves from point A to point B. Um, so just overcoming certain barriers that you have. Yeah, I, I think that's a really great description, actually, Holly. I like that. And by the way, I think your um, your new role in terms of content is fantastic. So um, congratulations on that. And, and obviously you're covering a whole range of topics there. So um, we look forward to um, watching out for some of the content coming out from Reddington. Um, Doug, what, what's your thoughts then on that? Um, how can how can coaching be um, tailored to different needs that people have? Well, I think um, it's the coach's responsibility to stimulate thinking as much as possible because um, it's it's natural for us all to have blind sides, mm -hmm. and and also that's what's lovely. It's why people are drawn to each other. It's why we like to discuss things and debate things because it stimulates our thinking. It broadens our understanding. It gives us a broader frame of reference. Um, um, uh, so I think it's the coach's job to. To, to kind of interrogate the brief, if you will, which is terrible language when it comes to dealing with people. But you, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. about making sure that um, uh, it's, it's my job to kind of do a diagnostic from my frame of reference, which is specialized in that area so that I can then um, come back to the person that I'm working with and we can decide what areas we're gonna focus on. Um, and then obviously um, it, there's, it's important to be super flexible it's like any great leader a great leader needs to be resolute in what they want their outcome to be but completely flexible in their approach and when I coach somebody uh, my passion and my ambition for myself is to create amazing stories for that person so that they um, go further than they thought they could um, uh, and that they really land somewhere that's going to have a significant change in the ways that's really good for them I don't decide what that is they tell me by me stimulating their thinking and them kind of understanding it. And ultimately, you know, we've had these conversations before, haven't we, Gillian, about how you can't change people. People won't be changed. That's yeah. never going to happen. Um, but what you can do is offer platforms for learning and make those platforms really attractive and exciting and sexy and fun and stimulating. And essentially, I think that's what a really good coach's job is. Yeah, so it, it sounds like upfront, Doug, it, it's about, um, in terms of the tailoring, really understanding that person um, and yeah. understanding their needs and then staying with them for the journey, as opposed to mentoring sometimes is um, around a specific area. 
or a specific point does that does that resonate yeah definitely i you know i think um i mean you you know actually you've said this to me as well that um as a mentor you learn uh, you know as much as you give to share from somebody because you know things change they evolve um you know even though you've been in gone through the same journey it's not at the same time um and you're not the same person you're somebody else completely um but i do think that it's 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 maybe mentoring slightly more measurable that doesn't mean that coaching can't be measurable it just means that the flexibility around those measures need to be something that is discussed if i'm asked to coach somebody by a senior person then i need to make sure that that senior person is bought into the fact that this is the measure of that is something that we are going to design and you're going to say whether that works for you or not it's not something that you're going to say i want to return on investment around this 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 and this because that flexible that's no there's no flexibility in that we're not dealing with machines we're dealing with people do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it all becomes a bit mechanical doesn't it yeah 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 and then there's no flex there's no air around it then and then there's nowhere for it to go yeah holly as a, as a young person in the industry have you had any positive experiences of coaching yeah i think so i guess um i've never had a formal um coach like you have jillian but definitely i would say throughout my career i've probably had informal coaches um, particularly when i made the switch from consulting to marketing um there was a quite senior woman um at reddington who i think really helped me with this um and i would say i guess this comes back to the point about the difference between mentoring um and coaching um because i have had like a formal mentor before um and it was really great but it kind of felt like it was much more developing my specific skills that that role required um whereas with this informal coaching experience it was far more about seeing um what my skills were um, and where my passions lie and then finding something to fit me um which I think was quite a difference there in the two um, relationships yeah and, and did you face any like what might be some of the challenges um in a, in a kind of relationship like that yeah I think just um I guess as Doug said the flexibility um it's quite easy to kind of go into something and have in mind what you want out of the end of it. Um, but you have to be open minded with this kind of stuff and kind of go where the conversation and the discussion takes you. Yeah, that, that's a really good point, actually, about being open minded about what the end might look like um, and what the path and the journey might be. Doug, um, uh, Holly mentioned the word formal there, which is quite interesting because um, how, how structured do you think, you know, a sort of coaching needs to be yeah well I mean it goes back to that question about how much structure does the person need essentially and there is an element of um uh the organization that they work within and, the, and I need to be aware of the culture that they're trying to create change in as well um uh, and it's interesting because I've, I've been lucky enough to have experience of very senior people in corporate environments uh people who are uh, entrepreneurs or business owners um, uh, and just a whole range of different kind of frames of reference and, and, and influences. Um, I think um, some people, I mean, if you look at different, say, for example, I'm going to go off piece and I'm going to get my, put my coaching out on just for a second. So pardon the science bit, but if you, yeah, thanks. <laughs> if you look at, um, if you look at different communication styles, so, so say, for example, I asked both of you, um, if you've got an amazing idea and you're really excited about sharing it, is your first instinct to share it uh, by grab someone and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and talk to them about it? Is it to just draw it out um, uh, and map it out? Is it to write it out so you're really clear about it? Send it to somebody in an email or is it just to get the bullet points out? What would you both say? I'd be the, the email, I think. The email? And yeah. Jim, Jim, what about you? Um, I'm kind of like, I like to map out a bit in a bit more detail. Yeah, yeah, of course. Understand it. Yeah, which is great because we've all got a lead instinct towards how we communicate and, and those different styles. So the, the grab a coffee is kinesthetic. The, um, uh, the, the, the draw it out, map it out in that respect is more visual. The write it out, um, you know, so it's all really clear um, in, in, with good language is auditory. And then just the bullet points is, is um, auditory digital. Um, and so I think um, whenever I'm communicating with anyone, I need to read what their natural communication style is. I need to match that style. And then I need to broaden their range so that they can start reading <laughs> different people's communication styles. So you could call that a structure. 
yeah. but essentially it's it's a tool which helps me organize and and read someone so that they can then relax into those things and i think that um often it's part of the struggle that somebody in my position might have is is that um, they're like, oh, well, I got there on my own. And they did get there on their own, but there's quite a lot of sophisticated thought going on around what questions are being asked, when they're being asked. Um, and again, that, that kind of measure bit, that review, um, uh, it might not seem like it's um, deeply tangible, but the reality is, is that I am constantly getting people to check up on themselves to see how they're doing. I'm not saying to them, you just rely on me and I will give you graphs and say, oh, look, you're doing this, that and the other, because that's not useful because, you know, that's my, that would be a language that I might want to use if I'm particularly auditory digital or something. I need to make sure that I reflect that on them. And I also want, I don't want to create dependency. I want to create mm -hmm. independency. Um, which is a terrible business model, <laughs> but ultimately, um, it's my job to get um, the people that I work with to 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 follow some kind of what feels like a soft structure, but it's actually quite sophisticated. So they're before they know it, they're in the habit of keeping a really close eye on their entire bigger picture to make sure that it's moving in the direction that serves them. Yeah. So I mean, so. How do you actually then start working with clients in terms of that kind of structure and framework? It, it feels funny, doesn't it? Because we've already done this, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, but you're going to share it. <laughs> I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it. Even though I know you exactly. So um, I always start with an informal conversation because here's the thing. I don't know if I can help somebody um, initially. And, and, and if I do, then that conversation is a sales conversation. And what a hideous way to start um any connection with anyone even if it does you know turn into a working relationship um and the truth is i'm coming for what well, i get my self-esteem for making sure that my knowledge and experience serves me by being useful to other people um so the first thing i'm going to do is kind of do that conversational diagnostic um where do they want to go is that somewhere i can i can support them in getting do we have a connection is my kind of language and my kind of use of structure something that they're going to be comfortable with um, enough to be able to move forward with it because if not i've got a full network of people I think thinking about your last podcast where you're talking about networking I, I, the reason i love networking is because the pressure's off for me because whenever i speak to anyone i'm interviewing them to see how they're going to be useful to my clients yeah. essentially because i want to know who does what how they do it how that's useful so i can say to my clients if there's something they're talking about that i i just don't have enough knowledge around or more importantly i don't feel i think somebody else could really you know step change them i'm gonna you know introduce them to somebody else so the first thing to do is i just have a conversation with people nice and formal chat to find out where their awareness is around themselves what they need and what coaching really looks like okay so holly thinking about all that um is do you think accessing a coach in itself is a potential challenge for for people particularly maybe young people yeah i would say um like a traditional coach i guess there's like the time and the cost barrier to it um like i don't know whether i'm in a position in my career right right now to um, employ Doug to be my coach um, but I do feel like on social media there's like a growing thing of um, I'll probably call it like coaching communities um, which are essentially just like not to be cheesy but like a judgment free zone um, that opens up in a discussion um, in, a, in a certain area um, so I don't really like calling myself a money coach um, because I think it's gotten quite a lot of bad rep um, lately um because essentially some people are kind of giving out advice without the qualifications on social media which obviously um isn't very legit but i guess what i am doing does have similarities with coaching um in that i'm not telling people what to do um but i'm just giving them then the information um and the confidence they need to go away and do it themselves um and also i think another part of coaching like doug said is talking in people's language so I guess I'm not necessarily doing the visual or um, auditory, but I am um, just like breaking things down and yeah. making finance fit them rather than expecting them to understand all of the crazy jargon that we use. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And that relates very much to, to your blog there, doesn't it? In terms of what, what you're trying to or what you are achieving. Um, and there's different ways of thinking about coaching because we had a really interesting discussion about that when we did our uh, kind of pre-briefing call about is, is your blog 
coaching or or where does it fit almost on that spectrum if I could call it that mm. um, and I think you've described it really well there in terms of what you're trying to achieve and obviously with us working in financial services we've always got to be very careful haven't we that we are not straying into giving advice yeah and has that been a challenge for you at all yeah I think it has um it yeah I, I guess you obviously I think sometimes especially on social media um, people will just kind of believe what you say. Um, so I think definitely like making sure that you're being clear on this is just education. Um, but I think what's been really helpful um, is I do a large um, a large part of what I do is just dispelling myths. Um, so I'll ask people like, oh, why haven't you started investing yet? Um, a big one is I don't want to lose all of my money. Um, and so just explaining that like, yeah, if you're investing properly that, um, yeah, you probably read some, some dodgy information on that um so but i think that just kind of puts people at ease and make makes it more accessible to them sure so we can absolutely relate um the work that you're doing um to the work that doug does um just in a, a slightly different way but doug I'm, I'm keen to explore the whole concept of coaching in the context of diversity what what's your sort of views on that yeah, <clears throat> I'm really pleased you asked that question. And I think that um, because it's not a question that's being asked enough in this space, which is ironic because this is the space to ask it, you know, um, essentially most of what I do um, and interestingly, and that some of what Holly's blog does is still listed as soft skills, um, which is which I've always found slightly comical because there's the what to do and the how to be. And ultimately you can't tell people who to be, but you can tell them, and advise them that of the role that they're doing this is what of yourself what's useful and that programs all the what you do so that's not a soft skill that's a foundational skill and i think what holly's doing really beautifully is is and, and something that i hugely believe in is that context is key is that share context and yes context can be up for um um uh, uh about um what's the word i'm looking for completely my brain's gone dead um perception <laughs> is about perception so people have different ideas about what the context is but ultimately you're sharing facts do you know what I mean and dispelling myths is such a really fantastic thing to do and I think dispelling myths is part of creating agency for people as well so it's it's really important as far as I'm concerned so, so just for context to share context is that the majority of my clients are senior women in finance and the main reason for that is that women are, are really those women not women, all women, because I, it's impossible to generalise, but those women are fantastic at um, being connect, good connectors and sharing the seat at the table. This is a tool that I found, which is really useful here. Now, let me share it with you as well, um, which is fantastic. Now, not all minority groups have those. those. Some minority groups are disrupted from being able to have those really strong connectors. So I, I, I firmly believe it's never enough to just say you're welcome. I think it's important to create agency by going to people and saying, you specifically come, you know, this, I, I want your input. Because like we said, um, it doesn't matter whether you're a mentor or a coach or what the culture of your business is, we all learn from each other. <clears throat> and that's where the flexibility comes in. I need to make sure that I work with as many people as possible because I want to be useful to as many people as possible. And um, the, the fact that I've been invited to speak here on this essentially as Women's Network is incredibly flattering. Could there be a woman that could come along and have this conversation and be just as impactful? Of course, if not more. And I was talking, I'm setting up actually uh, where I live, uh, a women's networking event on, on the side of a, of a networking event, which is, you know, mixed. Um, and what I've done is I've asked the, the women who are helping me organize it, whether they, how much, how they want me, how much they want me involved, because, you know, I, and I'm constantly asking questions around, you know, what, what shortcuts does it create if you have a, a, a female only network? Um, and it's not enough, you know, we talked about, we need to make sure that we go to black and brown women in that network and say, when we're talking about women's network, we mean you <laughs> and make sure that it's really clear. And I think, um, so maybe I have an agenda, maybe I weave it into my coaching, but ultimately because I'm a performance coach, not a life coach, and it's all about the bottom line, which I find people tend to um, engage in better. Yeah. It's like, the, you know, the statistics are clear, more diversity, means a better clarity around what affects the better line, the bottom line for everyone. Yeah. Um, and it's just about making sure that um, we're nudging ourselves to remind ourselves because 
um, it, it's important and it creates better results. Yeah, and, and therefore in the future, I know we were going to talk about this, in the, in the future, do you see that um, link to diversity taking a stronger direction? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's something that Holly said as well earlier, um, or touched on around, <clears throat> you know, when she was getting um, sort of mentoring and coaching and, and, and the ability to define the two was because one was about this particular role and one is about the bigger picture. Um, and I think um, you, some people, well, not some people, a lot of people in a very corporate environment, for example, are going to need mentoring around what diversity actually looks like. And that agency piece is a perfect, perfect example. At the end of the day, it still doesn't mean that it's um, anyone who's perceived as a minority, it's not their job to do that. <laughs> um, but if, they, if it serves them to be a mentor, then they're the people that should be heard and, and, and engaged. As far as coaching is concerned, um, I'm, I'm always looking at the bigger picture. If I don't have, if I'm not pushing myself to have a, as diverse an awareness um, then I'm less useful to people and that's the point of my job. Yeah, Holly, does that kind of resonate with you as well in terms of... Yeah, I think so. I, I guess like as our industry becomes more diverse, coaching becomes more important um, because mm -hmm. I guess it's less people are coming in with the skills and they just need to make it to the next step. Um, like for example, my parents are magicians so I come from quite a like wow. unusual background and so I definitely just wasn't going to come in and like fit the mold. Um, and so I think coaching was really important for that. Wow, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Did Holly just say her parents are magicians? Yeah. <laughs> is that is that a metaphor? Is that the, is that the actual that the actual truth? No, yeah, yeah. Well, Alakazam wanna... magic. If anyone wants to buy any truth, yeah. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I I just want to talk about that now. <laughs> <laughs> have to do a whole other podcast on this <laughs> it just sounds like fascinating. <laughs> well, look, I'm really conscious we've only got a couple of minutes left I knew that this one was going to race past because it's always such good fun talking to both of you um but I always like to finish with um with one question to each of you um and so let's let's just think about the um, the people listening to this podcast, either live or who will download it. What would be your one piece of advice to the people that are listening to the podcast? Um, Doug, what, what, you you go first. Okay, my one piece of advice would be to um, work on an articulation of where you get your self esteem from, and also understand what due diligence means for you when it comes to choices that you make around your career great one that feels like really serious way to end this podcast <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with a giggle <laughs> holly, holly well, make it a light one holly make yeah, it a holly, light one. <laughs> up again. Um, yeah i guess i think it would have to be what i said earlier about being open-minded um and if you are really clear on the end game, um, maybe it's a mentor that you're looking for rather than a coach. But I think if you go into it with an open mind, um, you just never know where, where you might end up. Yeah, I, I love that piece of advice, actually. Well, I love all of the advice, Doug. So I, <laughs> I, I particularly love the um, going in with an open mind. I, th I think that's a really helpful way to end this because you know, I've certainly learned on my own coaching journey that, that starting with an open mind is, is great because you just never know well what comes out and, and how it ends and 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 also the the benefit of the support that a coach can give you so um so with that one I'm I, I just I just want to say thank you so much for taking part in this podcast I I've certainly absolutely loved speaking to both of you and I, I knew I would um and the debate on coaching is just is just so good we could definitely have another podcast on this one um next year maybe at some point um but it's really important for people on the call to understand that you know as an industry we do support everybody and there's different ways of doing it so that can be both coaching mentoring and also networking and some of the other topics that we've covered on this podcast um, and it's all about ensuring that people who join the industry really genuinely believe that they can have a successful and a fulfilling career um, and, and coaching is a way to make sure that they're supported. So, um, so thank you to those of you who are listening in today and who are going to listen to this on download. Um, as next month, um, it will not have escaped everybody's notice, it's December. Um, so the podcast won't be taking place uh, on the last Friday of the month as all the others, because we'll all be uh, hopefully resting and enjoying ourselves. So we're taking a slight change of direction. The podcast will take place on the 10th of December.
and I'm going to be joined again making changes here by two great guests to talk about their careers, how they joined the industry, what shaped their career path. So there'll be a really interesting discussion um, because for me, um, careers don't always go in straight lines any longer. They kind of zigzag around a little bit and sometimes we have to make choices. Um, and, and I think it'll be a really interesting one to listen to about how people enter the industry and, and what's happened and what's shaped their career. Um, and despite the timing change, um, similar to all of the other podcasts, uh, the one that we'll do on the 10th will be available for download. Um, so with that, um, thank you again to my two amazing guests. Thank you to everybody who's listened to this podcast today. And we hope you'll join us for the December one. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>